This week, we're going to learn all about art museums. An art museum is a place where you can go and learn about art and artists. You can see all kinds of artwork at the museum. You can see paintings. You can see sculptures that are all different sizes, big and small. You can see an installation that fills a whole room. You might see videos, photographs, drawings, illustrations. Art museums hold a wide variety of artwork. This week, we're going to take a virtual tour of some different museums online. Have you ever been to an art museum before? What kind of artwork did you see there? How did it make you feel when you were there? What did the building look like? We're gonna save some of our favorite artworks so that we can recreate some miniature versions. This week, I want you to save all of your artwork so that you can create your own museum next week. We're also gonna learn about some of the people who work at museums and what their job entails. What is the purpose of a museum? Art museums and galleries are buildings or spaces that display all kinds of art. The purpose of a museum is to collect, care for, research, and present art to all of us. What can you see at an art museum? Museums have many kinds of art. You may see paintings, sculpture, photographs, or video art. The art may be from long ago or created recently. Some museums specialize in specific kinds of art and others exhibit many different types. How is art protected at the museum? The works of art at museums are valuable, sometimes priceless, and often irreplaceable. Museums want people to visit, enjoy, and learn about the art, but they also need to keep it safe. When you go to a museum, you will notice guards in many locations. They are there to help you find your way and to remind people to be safe. Who takes care of the art? The job of managing and taking care of a museum's collection of art is a big responsibility. Curators are people who know a lot about the artwork they oversee. Curators help decide what artworks are put on display for people to view. They decide how the objects will be hung or arranged in the galleries. Curators also do research and learn more about certain artworks so they can share that information with the visitors at the museum. They might write articles or blog posts about the works and sometimes give talks or lectures to share their knowledge. Now let's browse some online collections of different museums and see if we can find some things that we want to save for our art project. The Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City has this great feature where you can take a virtual tour of their collection using a map. You can drag the map to visit different parts of the museum and hover or click on the dots to learn more about the artwork. Let's see if I can find an artwork I want to include in my museum. I love this tapestry of the unicorn in captivity. It is made of wool warp with wool, silk, silver, and gilt wefts. I love how detailed this artwork is. I also really like that they included this fun fact. Some people in the Middle Ages believed that unicorns were real animals. They also thought that you could make poison water or wine safe to drink by touching it to a unicorn's horn. Let's see what I can find at some other museums. The Smithsonian American Art Museum has this great feature where you can browse their collection by emoji. I can click on an emoji and see artwork of that theme. Let's see if I can find something else to include in my collection.
I ended up choosing the dog emoji because dogs are one of my favorite animals. I love the sculpture of a Dalmatian and the pattern the artist created by painting its spots. Baltimore has many great museums to visit. The first museum I am going to explore is the American Visionary Art Museum. Visionary artists are self-taught, and I love that many of the artworks in the museum are created with unusual and unique materials. I decided to include the cosmic egg sculpture in my collection. I love the shiny effect the mosaic pieces create and I'm always impressed whenever I see it in person. The Walters Art Museum is another great museum in Baltimore. You can browse their collection by category, date, creator, community, medium, place, museum location, or tag. My favorite room in the museum is the Chamber of Wonders. I was able to find a very small sculpture of a soldier that I have never seen before. I'm going to look for him next time I can visit the museum in person. In Greek mythology, Medusa was one of three monstrous gorgons. She had live, venomous snakes in place of her hair. People who gazed into her eyes would turn into stone. I love how they were able to include so many details on such a small artwork. The Baltimore Museum of Art allows you to view their permanent collection and to see information about past, present, and future exhibitions. I am going to include Shanique Smith's black, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, pink, and Elizabeth Telford Scott's plantation. I love the colors and textures in these two pieces and want to make sure I'm including Baltimore-based artists in my collection. Print the frames, handout, or draw your own and fill them with the artwork you create. Here are the supplies I will need for my artwork. I'm going to use pencil, sharpies, and watercolor paint, but you can use whatever you have available. Remember to save your drawings for next week's lesson when we will create mini museums. I started by drawing out my frames using a ruler. Next, I used a pencil to sketch out each artwork, and then I filled in the details using watercolor and sharpies.
I finished my artwork by coloring in the frames and adding any details I might have missed. The PCPS Virtual Summer Art Enrichment Camp will offer morning and afternoon sessions for two weeks, July 6th to 17th. Each daily session will include two hours of synchronous small group instruction. Independent art prompts will be developed for each level to provide extended learning opportunities during the synchronous teaching session. So the first one is a wood mask by the artist Kimmy Cantrell, and he is a contemporary artist. That means he's alive today. Yes, I could totally see that. So it looks kind of like that, that wouldn't look like a bark of a tree. Yep. Annabelle. Um, uh, the one on the left, I think like in the top right corner of it, that looks like a trash bin. I can like, see that yeah, with a texture. And the giant nose looks like um, a ruler. Yes, it does. And if you look Closely at this one. Let me see if I can blow this up a little bit more. Can you guys see that? He's got like math problems on the one side. So on the green side. Today we're going to create a pattern in relief. And relief is a form of sculpture. So what we're going to do is actually you're going to use paper, scissors, and glue to make the paper come off the page and create a pattern. So I'm going back and forth. I'm not focusing on one specific area of the apple. I'm allowing myself to go back and forth and build in those details as they come. So I started with a really kind of light, sketchy. Teachers will work with small groups of students directly, teaching synchronously and providing immediate feedback throughout the two-hour sessions. Sessions consist of a mix of activities and creative thinking experiences. And then if you can start to think about um, like what kinds of things you want to put on your face, so if you, you know, really like, I really like art, so maybe I make, make, make my nose into a paintbrush or something like that. Washes, we talked about flat wash, braided wash. Um, it was when I went color change, I like the idea of calling it variegated, it sounds very fancy. So, and then so if you're not quite sure what that is, you can see a couple of things up on screen here uh, that were all built as 3D models using a website called Sculpt G. Students enrolled in the camp will receive an age-appropriate art kit of supplies that will be used throughout the two weeks. Additionally, guidance will be offered for setting up a studio space to maximize your potential. My live drawings back here, where I've had my phone open and I was drawing from my phone while you guys are watching draw. So whatever works for you, you know, I guess we have to take advantage of all the technology we possibly can. Okay, so. And I have a couple of tools that I can use to help me modify the shape. You can see I have a brush, I can inflate, and I have a number of other tools as well. I'm going to start with the inflate tool. As I'm starting and I have a little off-camera apple on a plate here, um, is to start with the local color. The conclusion of camp will include an online virtual art exhibition with artwork uploaded by the end of camp. The BCPS Virtual Summer Art Enrichment Camp registration is $175 and can be paid by credit card online with your registration. Alternative payment option requests and questions can be directed to lwilliamson2 at bcps.org. We look forward to seeing you this summer!